seduced her, then manipulated her into committing murder. Any chance we can claim that everything Molly said in rehab was privileged? Uh, the patient privilege doesn't cover drug counselors or things you say in group therapy sessions. So, Luther, what are we going to do about Amber? I have a plan. You want to share it? No. When you need to know, I'll tell you. How's our demonstration? It shows one person committed the murder, not two. That's great. For it to work, we need Amber to be involved in it, and doing a demonstration with a hostile witness is dangerous. Forget it. It's too risky. Molly's going to have to testify instead. Tom's getting her ready, but she's pretty stressed out. DA delivered new discovery. On Amber Wilson, I hope. Sort of. They're letters Molly wrote to Amber. They're love letters. More like porn. These girls were crazy, and they hated Daniel. They read my letters? God, they're going to think I'm a lesbian or something, right? No, they think you're a killer, Molly. And I wouldn't worry about what they think of your sex life. Those letters are going to bury you. You talked about getting rid of them. We were just venting. We didn't mean it. I'm going to be sick. Come on, pull it together. We need you to take the stand tomorrow. Confident. Confident? Give me a drink or something stronger. What did you just say to me? I was kidding. It was a joke. You have to stay clean, Molly. I told you. No drugs, no drinking. I dream of making love to you all the time. Can't you tell? When did the defendant send that letter to you? A week after we started the affair. Why can't we live together? When I'm clean, we could find a place but we have to deal with Daniel, make him go away. All the letters are the same. She says she loves me. She wants to be with me. She wants us to be a couple. Why did you agree to kill Daniel? It was Molly's idea. Daniel was threatening to out us. That day, Molly begged him to leave us alone, but he got rough. He laughed at her, he slapped her. We went to see him to ask him to redirect his anger at Molly to something more productive. But he just got very confrontational. He kept saying he would destroy us. That was his word. Molly said we couldn't be together until we got rid of Daniel. The jury believes Amber's story. Molly has to refute it on the stand. Is she ready? I don't know, honestly. She's pretty fragile right now. What? You've been so worried about taking care of Molly, you're losing sight of your job. You're supposed to be getting Molly ready to testify. You want to know why Molly's so troubled? She's surrounded by enablers. And you're one of them. Where have you been? What are you doing up here? Nothing. Thinking. Are you drunk? Yeah. <laughs> Tequila. You want some? Are we gonna have to work late again? I hope so. What are you doing? <laughs> Molly, stop it. Stop it. Molly. Stop it. Molly. 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 Stop. So Molly. Right. Enough! You gotta stop doing this to yourself. condition of her bail is that she stay away from alcohol and drugs. I know, Ron, I know. This is not a big surprise. She's an addict. This is not the first client we've had go off the rails, Ron. Trials break people. Our job is to make sure they don't. Explain to me why we can't control an 18-year-old girl. I don't know. It was my job to keep her out of trouble and to get her ready for the trial. I was too close. I didn't realize what bad shape she was in. Anything else? Like what? Besides the drinking, did she say or do anything else we need to worry about? Is there any chance we can use her in court? If I was trying the case, I wouldn't put her on the stand. Luther, I'm sorry. The DA managed to delay her direct examination of Amber until the very end of the day. The jury went home with it fresh in their minds, and they've had a whole night to let Amber's story transform into truth. The case comes down to your cross. Good. I was hoping it would. That was my plan. Once the DA made her his prime witness, she became our prime suspect. So you're prepared for this? I'd better be. If I can't take Amber out, 
Molly's going to be convicted. Ms. Wilson, my client denies having helped you kill Daniel. I'm not surprised. She's always lied. So we agree. One of you is lying. Yes. This is simple, then. If the jury believes you, they should convict Molly. If they don't, they should acquit her. You think they should believe you because you're such an honest, trustworthy person? No, I've lied, So but... you are a liar? I've lied in my life, but That's I'm... That's not a question. That's a fact. You've been a liar your whole life. You've lied to get drugs. You've lied to get money to buy drugs. One of the symptoms of the disease of addiction is lying. To family, to friends. Lying to a jury of strangers must be easy. I'm telling the truth now. Because you've recovered from your disease of addiction. That's right. So you told your employers at the center that you had an affair with my client. You wrote her letters, had sex with her, sold drugs to patients. Oh, right. You lied about all that. I admit it was a horrible betrayal. I'm ashamed of it. But Molly and I both lied about the affair. I lied to the sinner and she lied to her father. We are both addicts. We both suffer from the same disease. If you're both liars, the jury can't believe either of you, which means the DA can't prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, which means this jury has to acquit. That's just an observation. I'll move on. You confess to murder. Then you cut a deal to lie about my client. Because if you told the truth and admitted that you killed Daniel alone, you would go away for life. It's a strong motive to lie. No, I am not lying. Molly and I did this together. Your Honor, I'd like the witness to participate in a demonstration. Show us how you and Molly threw Daniel over the balcony. Daniel was standing here at the rail. Molly was a few feet behind Daniel, and to his right, I was to the left of Molly. Was Daniel facing the two of you, or did he have his back to you? He was facing us, calling us names. That's when Molly and I pushed him over. Hold it. If he was facing the two of you, how did he get the contusions on his stomach? I don't know. Uh, maybe he got caught going through the glass. Where exactly were you and Molly standing when you pushed them over? I was standing here. And Molly was here. Where was the planter? All the balconies at the center have a planter. It wasn't there when the police got to the scene. But it left a watermark. An outline of where it was. Defense Exhibit 132. It shows there was a planter in the exact same spot you said Molly was standing in. Now, if there was a planter there that day, two people couldn't fit on that balcony. You and Molly couldn't have been where you said you were when Daniel died. Did you move the planter after Daniel died? Or did the police just lose it? You got kids? You love them more than anything in the whole world, right? But it doesn't matter. They can still go wrong. What? You think this was my fault? I say to my kids, I am not your friend, I am your father. I'd probably say no to them nine out of ten times. And if I ever found out they'd ever use drugs, I would kill them myself. No, you wouldn't. How old are they? My boy is five, my girl is eight. Talk to me in ten years. Will the foreman present the verdict? We, the jury, find the defendant, Molly LaRussa, 